This is Dragonfly, William Gillick. Once we get up to speed, we're aiming for about this. How to get there from where you start. Start at the ending. What's the ending look like? Don't know how well you can see that, but there it is. Start at the end. When you're practicing, the ending is a very good place to start. So here we have, okay, let me back up just a little bit. Another good place to start is looking at the basic cues. So we have both hands are in treble clef for most of the piece until you get to, okay, maybe half the piece. But we're looking at, we have one automatic sharp, F sharp, and that would normally lead us as a leading tone. The last sharp in a major key signature leads to the tonic. So if this were in a major tonality, here we have Do is G, Do is G. However, this could be a minor, and check out the very beginning. It starts on La, so when G is Do, then E is La, and indeed, look at the ending here we have E and E. So that's where we're going to end. So let's get the tonality in our minds, in our ears, in our in our in our thinking. So yes, la do mi mi si mi re ti si la do la. So now you've got another way you could do that is la ti do re mi re do ti la mi mi do. Sorry, mi do la or la si la si la. Now you've got that minor tonality in your head. The other thing we're looking at, how is this moving? It's moving in groups of two. Bop, 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 bop. So the ending. We're gonna start there, open fifth, and we have a sixth here. Now, where does this come from? It would have been part of an E minor triad. La, do, mi. So do is in the right hand. La. I can't say that high. La is in the right hand and then we've got the leading tone right there that's how we have it and that's pianissimo how do we get it leading up to that so we've got this so that's an anchor point we're going to go an octave down from that and end up there of course it will be playing a staccato, but now there's our E minor tonality. Ba, 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 ba. Now the anchor, every time you have an accent, and right now, where am I starting from? I'm at measure 14, 15, 16, going through the end. Look at these accents. So E, 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 G, B, E, G, B. Told you I can't sing that high. So. Those are the notes. It's just an arpeggio. Starting from here and then going up there. So we have this one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. You could also say it do ta data do ta data do ta data do do ta data 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 And the, once you've got, remembering to let your wrist move, and this is do, 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 do. And now we have what happens? Three, two, one. And that three, two, one, you're going to be using that all over the place. That's the next thing that you would isolate. And then you go going up to there. No, too far. Sorry, I went too far. So it only goes up to there. So we have the first one is just like that. Then 
then we have the fa moving. Then we have If you've been practicing your triads, this will be pretty easy for you. It's just a triad. If you haven't, then practice this with the dotted rhythms. Remembering to keep yourself nice and relaxed. As you go. So that's long short. Now we're going to go short long. Short as long as you need and long as long as it takes. Then you'll get more complicated. So long, short, 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 long. to do that really fluidly then the opposite then long short 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 long short sorry short long short 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 long short 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 long in other words the second in the group of four is long everything else is short Then the third one, short, short, long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. Watch their fingering. Now, if at any point you find yourself hesitating or missing, stop right away. So for example, let's say that I went from and I missed here. I wanted to get here and I overshot. So I would back up a little bit. Then I go back to the you see how the wrist is moving as you go? So wiry fingers, loose wrist. I don't know how many times my teacher told me that over the years. Oops, I did that. So I missed there. Backing up a little bit from it. And so on and so forth. Then you add in the left hand. And here it's just... And then, then again with the dotted rhythms, and of course you'll do them correct, perfectly and correctly because you're not trying to talk at the same time as you are playing. And so on and so forth. Then you're able to play. I have to put my left hand in position. I forgot. <laughs> it has to go up there. That's one of the trickier parts. So once you have that figured out, you'll also have at measure 11, the middle. This will be a lot easier because it's the same. And even before that, measures three and four. This is when we practice the ending first. The ending tends to be one of the more difficult pieces, but also most people practice from the beginning every single time they play. So the beginning's really great, the ending's not so much. So you start practicing the ending bits first, 
and then you do the more difficult pieces of the piece and then you fill in the other stuff. Now, here's, we're going back and forth between an E minor triad and a C major. E minor, C major, E minor, C major, E minor. Now that's just in terms of what the triad itself is identified as. But it's all of this is within the context of E minor tonality. See, there's that leading tone. So your left, your, sorry, you say your right hand thumb is just going back and forth. And in between those, we have a ta data, do ta data, do ta data, do ta data. All of this is a dragonfly, and Gillock, the composer, has requested that we consider this as moving quickly in strict time. In strict time is composer speak for please don't rush, keep it steady. This is a diligent dragonfly. Now, since you've already practiced the ending, you already recognize that as being very similar to what you had here. It's just a different inversion. Now adding in, we have a different chord here. It's from an F sharp minor with a major seventh, uh, sorry, minor seventh I need to say. F sharp minor, minor seven chord. We take that C out, put it up here. So. Notice what I'm doing with my left hand. Holding, wait, I missed the articulation. I was holding all the way to the rest, but look at that. Above the fingering, we have that articulation. So this is actually just as detached. It's a little marking there. So. look at this. So when you practice that rest E and uh, rest E and only using the first three fingers, the thumb, the pointer, and the tall. And we're going to have to start with a rest E. Rest E. These we're going to be da 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 ba, 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 ba. Notice how these anchor points we're starting at the C, we go down a minor third, go down a minor third, go down a major third, and then we're going to end here. Sorry. And the left hand. Take that down here. Dominant seven, this is plain old dominant. And then we're going to the, this is an E minor chord. So there's the one chord and second inversion back to the dominant chord. So dominant, tonic, dominant. whole little lick from measure five through measure eight. We're going to go dotted rhythms again, then the opposite. Oh, 
this one's held. And I'd lift them both at the same time. Otherwise, I feel it's cleaner when they both release at the same time. So in the opposite, we're at measure five again. And this is the same as what we just did, but the left hand, instead of being up here, it's just like the, the beginning measures, but the left hand's down here. going to be, get a little different. Watch the left hand. We started out here. We're going to keep these two notes, the F sharp and the A, but instead of playing the finger three on that B, we're going to open the hand a little bit, adjust the wrist so we can fit that. Otherwise, if you try to do that, you kind of do this weird thing. So let your wrist move. This is why we need to have loose wrists and wiry fingers so that this is easy. If you find your wrist locking up, stop. Ask someone for help. Don't play like a claw. So we go from here to there. Bass note goes from there to there. And then we're almost to the end of the piece. So we've got da, 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 which we've already done before at measure five. So now we're at measure 13, we're doing the same thing. Da, 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 da. Now before it went like this, but instead of starting on the F sharp with finger three, we're actually gonna start with finger four on the D sharp. Ba, 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 ba. So this is where we're ending up. This is why we have this fingering. Sometimes we'll check out. Now how do we, I wanna end up there with finger one, but I'm starting out at this D sharp here. And then, okay, so how do I get there? Sometimes people will go, oh, well, your regular fingering for a scale. And here we have E minor. It's just an E minor scale, but descending instead of ascending. And we've got this little ornament or filigree or decoration here, a little detour. So remember, rest. You see how the left hand prepares, mine ended up re-preparing and in incorrectly so. so. So as soon as you let go of the left hand, aim for where it's ending up. You see how this is the next set of notes I'm going to be playing with the left hand? So we got. Excuse me. And then we start adding in the metronome stuff because we are now at the place where we had before. beginning and this is metronome marking 58 so I'm taking this more or less half tempo a little bit well not quite half tempo but start with if you find that's too fast when you first do a run through and you'll know it's too fast if you make mistakes mark where that mistake happens so that the next time you practice the piece so let's say for example you missed the left hand here Take your pencil, circle that, and the next time you practice it, start practicing the circled bits. Before you play, don't go from the beginning to the end. Do the most important bits. I cannot stress that enough. If you remember nothing else from what I tell you, slow practice, strategic practice, and don't just go from the beginning every single time. Make sure you're taking care of the bits that threaten your flow, your ability to be consistent and have a steady pace and confidence. Deal with the tricky bits so that they become as easy and effortless as anything else. Then you get to play with such ease and such joy. It's a gift, it's the gift you give yourself as good practice. 
back to 58 beats per minute. Bop, 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 bop. See how I'm taking a moment to check the tempo? Duta, data, duta, data, duta, data, duta, data. Look at that. Duta, data, duta, data, duta. If you have one of those analog style that go back and forth, you used to be wind those up, so much the better. You can actually see the beat coming. Duta, data, duta, data, do, day, here we go. at that speed how did you do if that weren't didn't work quite as well as you would have liked or if you're finding it difficult to fit bah, 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 in between the beats here's something else you can do go a little bit faster but instead of going with each of the left hand notes I'll probably show you that way Try it this way with me. Here we go. And by the way, the beginning is piano. Now we're going to crescendo up to here. Decrescendo. Okay, I made that part up. But do you see how now that I've got... If I mess up, I know where I'm going to end up. So it should be, pardon me, it should be. <laughs> and I mess this up, but I'm so practiced at keeping going no matter what, when I'm practicing as, a, as if I'm performing, I sometimes will practice what happens if I do make a mistake. So in this case, from measure five, what's supposed to happen. I did something else instead. So if I did a mistake, you just fill any old thing in that you possibly can in the time available. Obviously when you're practicing, go back and fix it. But if you are in a performance setting, you've got to be able to keep going no matter what. So. Now I've practiced that, I've pretty much fixed it, I hope. So I'm going to go back from measure three. I've already prepared my left hand. Preparing the left hand, diminuendo. happen instead of going and I went what do I do do you see what I did there just jump in to the next note that you know is coming as soon as you possibly can and that's one reason why it's so nice to have those anchor points starting out to begin with. You know exactly where that goes and that's locked in with, uh, with the timing. Those two concepts end up becoming inexorably linked. The pitch you want 
at the time you want. When you know what you're aiming for and you hear it in your head, those little mishaps is like, oh, I'll just jump back in at the next one. So now let's, let's say that I've messed that one. How would I fix that? Sometimes I'm, I'll ask myself, why did I mess that up? Why did I miss that? Maybe I could go the opposite. Sometimes it's just it needs to, time for your brain, the back of your brain, to settle it through. Oh, now I'm going to go from measure 14. Oh, let's go from measure 13. Ready and. I do uh, then I would say gradually increase the tempo still and a little faster the next time and then a little faster the next time yeah that's right and then maybe I would go and let's see eventually this is 208 beats per minute See, 100 beats per minute. That's the slowest one. So, that's the speed we want. Let's see how we do. One e and a two e and a ready and a go. Just needing to happen here but there you go the next thing I'm gonna be doing is locking in the dynamics starting a piano crescendo diminuendo mezzo piano crescendo probably a little bit of a diminuendo but you might choose to do a subito piano so piano crescendo diminuendo and pianissimo and by all means <laughs> practice the ending more than you practice anything else. There you go. Happy practicing. Hope this goes well.